Hey, welcome back to Doing It With Jason. Today I'm gonna to show you how to stain wood. More importantly, how to stain wood white. This is actually the first oil-based white stain I've ever found and tried and used. Normally you see water-based everywhere. It does an okay job. Oil-based white is phenomenal. So if you're looking to learn how to stain wood or furniture, you're in the right place. This video should help you out a ton. You can use all these techniques I'm about to show you with this white stain with any color stain. And by the way, my favorite stain is linked down below in the description. You can check it out, give it a whirl. You will not be sorry, I promise. Okay, so first off, we're gonna open this white stain. Uh, this is a no pain gel stain is what it's called. And by gel stain, I'll show you what I'm talking about. There, that is gel stain. As you can see, it's much thicker. It doesn't splish splash like all of the normals. Well, it does if you uh, decide to tip it over drastically like I just did. That's a mess. So the whole point of that is it's thicker than normal stains. If I would have did that with your basic stain that wasn't a gel stain, it would have been all over my computer. It would have been just everywhere, it would have been a mess. Always wear gloves when you're staining, especially with oil-based. This stuff is really hard to get off your skin. I prefer nitro gloves. I have a link down below of where to get those. Nitro gloves are one of my favorites, especially dealing with oil-based stains. They don't fall apart, they stay on, doesn't penetrate the glove, really good stuff. Okay, so now Dixieville also has an applicator pad, which is pretty cool. It comes in a two pack, it works really well. I've gone through the years not using applicator pads and just using rags, but I found it is working very nicely. So for this demonstration, I'm using a piece of quarter inch white oak quarter sawn. So you can see all the little flakes and everything, it's really pretty. The way I'm showing you works on any kind of wood species. Now to get a really good stain job, it starts with a really good prep job. I recommend using an orbital sander. Now, depending on how smooth the wood is, you're gonna wanna start with either 80 grit or 100 grit. I started with 100 grit. You're just gonna go over the piece, not like I'm doing with my hand, but nice and slow. You're gonna go one inch per second as you're sanding. You do not wanna go back and forth like this. That's gonna give you those ugly little hooks like here, and you don't want that on your project, I promise. So slow and steady wins the race, one inch per second. So you're going one inch with the grain per second. So one, I just went an inch, two, just went an inch, three, just went an inch, like that, if you get the picture. You're gonna wanna turn it on when you're doing this, but I'm not gonna bore you with sanding. Now, using the applicator pad, I'm gonna dip it in the no pain gel stain, and then, so I'm gonna go with the grain of the wood. A lot of times I see people going and they start and stop like this. You do not want to do that. You want to go completely all the way along the piece. Whether it's a furniture piece or even just a piece of wood that you need to stain, always go all the way, follow through. Now I'm just going to do half this piece to show you the difference. Okay, so after you put the stain on, you're gonna let it sit for a few minutes. How long you let it sit is totally up to you, totally up to how the wood is absorbing, how it's not absorbing, that sort of thing. Now, one plus thing with the gel stain that Dixie Bell has, you can leave it on without wiping it off so much. You're gonna wanna normally wipe off as much as possible when you're typically staining something because a lot of times the stain takes forever to dry and it could stay sticky and you don't wanna have that issue. So by using this applicator pad, I put it on, it might take a day or two or maybe longer depending on the humidity and the temperature that the piece is in and drying, but it will dry overall. If you leave it puddled on there, eh, wouldn't recommend that. Really thin layer, you can leave it on there. What happens is it'll hide a lot of the wood grain, so it might not be as translucent or transparent, one of those two, and look similar to a painted piece, but you can do that. Although I do recommend removing the stain as much as possible if you like the looks of it. So check this out. So if we remove it with just a rag, I'm gonna get it looking like this. So you can see that is wiping it off. That's gonna actually dry very quickly. It should be dry within six, eight hours. I can top coat it, ready to rock and roll because a lot of the stain just absorbed and I took everything that didn't absorb, I took it away. So here's a couple of scenarios to help you out for troubleshooting after you stain and maybe it didn't come out quite like you like it. So say I wipe this off and it's a little lighter than I wanted it to be. I want it to be a little darker. So if you just want it a little darker, let this dry for about six hours and then apply another coat. If you apply another coat instantly, it's gonna just react with the bottom coat and almost just wipe out the bottom coat. So you want that first coat to dry. Although there is circumstances when you can come back like this, just finish doing this, it's still wet, uh, but I did wipe off all the excess, and I can feather uh, a slight 
coat on top if I want it to be just a hair, you know, darker or more white. And I'm just like lightly going over it with the stain. So it's almost like dry brushing, but you're dry brushing with stain and not even a brush. So I can do something like that. Now, another way you can go about it is with a brush. I put it on, this is the heavier spot where I put it on back here and I didn't touch it at all, didn't wipe off. Now, instead of wiping it off with a rag, you can kind of blend it off with a brush just to make sure you don't have any puddles or any streaks left. To, you know, just thin it out just a little more. You know, you want to take a little bit of the excess off. You never want to leave too much on here. Uh, this isn't paint. It's actually stained, so it works totally different than paint. Paint, you put it on, it sits on top of the surface, it's chill, that's it. You leave it, let it dry. Stain, you want to be really thin on the layer that's sitting on top if you want to leave a layer on top. And people want to leave a layer on top for numerous reasons, but you're going to want to leave it on there if you want to hide some of the imperfections of the wood grain. If uh, the stain's coming out really irregular, then you're going to want to leave a little bit of a film coat on top just to, you know, hide all that. So there you go. So that's two options of staining. But really, there's unlimited amounts. You can kind of play with what I just showed you, make it your own. You almost have to let the piece of wood tell you what it wants. So now by playing around with the brush, the applicator, and the rag, you should be able to get the perfect stain job that you need for your project. So please let me know if you have any questions. Leave them down below. I'll be more than happy to help you out, answer them up. Till next time, we'll see you later.